Howdy, banger pals. What's this? Two Blaine videos in one week? Oh, lucky you uh, and me. I very much need the work. This is, of course, Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly metal review show. Last time you saw me, I was talking conventional death metal. This time I'm talking less conventional death metal. Take it away. Of course, after we talked about the first, we've got to talk about the second Ultimus record. It's epic out today, March 15th on Season of Mist. Ultimus are, of course, a blackened death supergroup and one of the few in recent memory that were able to actually deliver on the potential of the members within. David Vincent of Morbid Angel fame teamed up with Cryptopsy drummer Flo and Blasphemer from r and and X Mayhem to create 2019's Something Wicked Marches In uh, that we loved around here. So, my verdict? Something Wicked Marches In is a great extreme metal album and probably my favorite of the year so far. And it actually made a pretty big splash in the metal world, kind of coming out of left field. Uh, can the boys continue to defy the super group curse? Let's find out. Sigh. David Vincent is a complicated man. David doth giveth, but David doth taketh away. On Something Wicked Marches In, I found his vocals were weird, but like in a thumbs up way. It added a unique flair to the record that made it stand out from the group's collective works and sort of give Ultimus its purpose and identity, which these supergroups frequently lack. He's also a compelling lyricist, having the ability to kind of spin up his own little world. I I'm not going to say I understand like any of what he's trying to say, but it's in reading a Dune kind of misunderstanding way where you're like... This is compelling, but did I miss a book? What do these words mean? I'm confused. I, I thought this was book number one. What is going on here? Lyrics like, they stood for nothing. Now they don't stand at all. Lowest of lowly grounding did crumble after all. Come on, menacing. And every once in a while, he'll throw in a little flair rhyming implore with spoils of war. And his unique style also means that these are easy to make out, which is frequently a thing you don't get in death metal. But since David giveth. <sighs> On here, he sometimes tips the weird interesting into weird uh, territory. Uh, I find there's less low end in his voice compared to on the previous record, and it's causing him to sort of exit the death slash black range of voice and start stepping into the world of like, I don't know, epic heavy metal territory. You can be the judge. Here's a clip. Tell me what you think. Completely confusing me, though, is when he goes wildly over the top in the dead middle of the record on Mephisto Manifesto. It kind of circles back around and I like it again. It's not a track I was expecting from this record. I'm pretty sure it's the constant I'm working, I'm workings on it, but it's giving me like a troll metal bouncy vibe and I have a secret soft spot for that kind of thing. Every time I find a troll metal band that doesn't suck, I just ooh, I listen to the hell out of it. Uh, this could be like a dwarven mining song, and based on it, I'd actually be down if David Vincent went, I don't know, what the hell, I'm going to make evil Judas Priest. 
And I mean, that could be where he's heading. Who knows what David Vincent's going to do? He's made his fair share of experiments over the years with no regard for anyone's safety, which I actually do really like about him. I think it's going to be a bit of a divisive track on the record, but I'm drawn a little bit to the wackiness of it. And I like a bit of fun in my metal. And hey, maybe you do too. Only one way to find out. What I am less into is the general pace of this record. While the previous album was fast and aggressive, this is a slower outing, trading the big spectacle for more spooky atmosphere, and it's not a direction that I think excels over something wicked. I've said it before, but I find atmosphere to be more fertile territory for smaller acts, as high production values tends to be the enemy of getting me unnerved with a spooky time. I mean, hell, black metal is a genre built on the vibe that's created when you record through uh, two cans connected by a string. It's like an indie horror that works around its low budget by never showing you the monster versus high-budget Hollywood blasting the thing with a spotlight. Ultimus is a band that's going to benefit from the more is more philosophy, not the less is more school. As if to confirm my suspicions, Scorcher comes in and damn, was that track written in July? Because it's a real Scorcher out there, eh? There's some Canadiana injected in here. Now let's try and get some funding from the government. <laughs> this week on Corner Gas. Anyways, Scorcher brings all the speed and aggression I was looking for on the record, and it does so in a runtime of 3 minutes and 22 seconds, including almost 30 seconds of intro. It's the shot in the arm the record needed that works well beyond its felt length, especially since it's coming out of Mephisto Manifesto, which, while much slower and longer, is full of such peculiar bombastic energy the two wind up having a tentpole effect for the whole album. Plus, it is nice to be grounded by a kind of more traditional black and death song after that. Take it away. Unfortunately for Epic, Ultimus winds up feeling a bit more like a traditional supergroup on this record. It kind of sits in a weird middle ground where I'm not sure what it wants to be. Sort of like David Vinchin's fashion sense over the years, eh? But I'm ch I don't know what's going on with me today. It's a shame because on something Wicked marches in, it really felt like a cohesive and unique band. Maybe it's because I've been listening to Necrophobic all week. Holy hell, Necrophobic is releasing in the Twilight Gray on Century Media on the same day. Black and Death Masters, the record's amazing. I reviewed it over on the Patreon because we have a Patreon campaign. You can give us a couple of bucks. And every week starting now, I'll be giving you a new video. I'm learning Adobe Premiere. Come on a journey with me. You'll get tip sheets, reviews, bonus content. Uh, that's going on over there. Then I don't have to sell you a VPN, but I do have to wrap up this review. So is it a bad record? No. Am I ever going to listen to it over the first Ultimus record? Also, no. It could be a cool middle point on the way to something interesting in hindsight. But as of now, like I said, not really going to listen to it over the first record. So I can't really give it anything over three out of five cowboy hat skulls. And boy, David Vincent probably won't like that. <laughs> Of course, that's not how these videos end. These videos end with shoutouts. And if you've watched this much of this review, I assume you like black and death metal. So in addition to Ultimus and Necrophobic, I've got two more black and death metal records coming out today. Had it, Mesophysical Engines approaching the event horizon on iVoid Hanger Records. <sighs> Holy hell, that's a lot of words to get out. Can the next album give me fewer words? Yes, Mergang and Duvall. 
That's it. It's an independent release also coming out today. Two great, wildly different black and death metal records to go with Ultimus and Dear God, Necrophobic and the Twilight Gray is amazing. Uh, but how do you feel about all those records? How do you feel about David Vincent experimenting with his voice? What's your favorite David Vincentism from over the years? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching the review. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you on the next one, gang. I'm working, I'm working. I'm